uh, Robert Fathauer. I have a small business called Tessellations that includes the uh, uh, online store mathartfund.com, the dice brand, the dice lab, and I'm talking about knotting and numbering kite tiling rosettes. But first, um, 13 ceramic sculptures since the last meeting. Uh, some of these combine organic and geometric character. These are half scaled porcelain cubes. This is a negative curvature surface based on the Sierpinski arrowhead curve. This one's based on the dragon curve. One has a rotational symmetry. Uh, this is in the gallery in Decatur. And these last three were completed earlier this year. Okay, next new dice since G4, G12. We have a D48 that's based on a Distaacus dodecahedron. Bob Bosch found a perfect uh, balanced numbering for that, so the face is some, the same number around every vertex of the same type. And we also have done the first uh, perfectly balanced or magic numbered uh, D30. And uh, next we have something called uh, OptiDice. These are optimized, optimally designed for um, injection mold, molded dice as regards the size of the dice, the uh, distribution of numbers, and also the uh, numerals themselves are made up of 10 hexagons. You know, the same amount of stuff is taken out of each face. And hot off the presses, a D13. And this couples with a special D4. You roll the two together, you choose randomly a card from a standard 52 card deck. And that'll be in your uh, gift box. Okay, rosettes are designs with um, rotational symmetry, often have mirror symmetry. These ROM rosettes are well known. There are tiling rosettes uh, based on other simple um, polygons, kites, triangles, darts. And these have a singularity, singular, singular point at the center, and they cover the entire plane. So I'm going to show an annular patch of an infinite tiling. It turns out these are all the same uh, tiling. So a kite has two adjacent short edges, two adjacent long edges. There's convex kites and there's concave ones, also known as darts. Uh, kite rosette. All the kites, all the darts, uh, sorry, all the tiles are similar. Uh, there's a scaling factor. These things are too colorable. And there's a continuum of shapes for any n uh, greater than 1. Here's n equals 5, starts kind of star-like, uh, goes through the triangle to a dart, and ends up with a moment of a 2n gone. And you go all the way down, somewhat surprisingly, to n equals 2. In that case, the uh, kites are always concave. I think you can go to an arbitrarily large uh, value of n. I'm going to go up to uh, 25 or so, and again show there's a wide range of kites uh, for a given n. You can define spirals from adjacent tiles, um, and these have an angle that's constant for a given n, no matter the shape of the kite. Like any tiling, you can escherize it. I did this a few years ago. At, uh, it's based on an eight-fold rosette. Each kite is turned into a flower and two leaves. There's a, a manta ray design, and there are rings of 13 rays. Another thing to do with these is to replace the edges with knot graphics. So here we have either a knot or a link, a link that has more than one strand. Let's see, we go from point to point, and we find uh, there are two strands here. Here are n equals 6, and uh, there are three rings of kites. We take a ring away, and now we have three strands. Okay, well, let's, let's look at a prime number like 13, and uh, let's go from one point to another point. Now, we didn't get back to the starting point, and since 13 has no divisors, we're going to sweep out uh, the entire knot with a single strand. In this case, I had eight rings, and we went 9 thirteenths of the way around uh, from point to point. So if we add four rings, maybe we can go back to the starting point right off the bat. So here we have 12 rings. We go in and back out. And now there are 13 strands. What if you add 13 rings? So now we have 25 rings of kites. Go halfway around, another halfway, and complete it. Again, we have 13 strands, but now each strand makes two loops around the center. In general, the uh, number of strands is the greatest common denominator of r plus 1 and n. These things can be thought of as grids. Grids are good for puzzles or games. Here we have two sets of pentominoes tiling a rosette. 
So you can look at magic, uh, magic squares. Here's a pan-diagonal magic square. I found a way to map these onto rosettes, which I think works for all n. And this shows how that works. The nice thing about that is there's no preferred diagonals. So there's no broken diagonals. So it's really a nice way to show a pan-diagonal uh, magic square. And how does that work? If we extend the magic square, we can choose a different number, a different group of the numbers 1 through 16, like this. If I cut that out and glue these two edges together, that is topologically identical to a rosette. And you can see how that maps onto that. So one last thing, let's put gathering for Gardner on a, a uh, ring of uh, kites. And let's add seven more rings. And if we rotate each ring by just the right amount, 